And, but he said he didn't realize that he wasn't paying attention to his dad, to, to his son, when the son was, was just being a good little boy. And, and in those times when he, when, he, when he needed a dad to speak into his life. And, and one day his son walked up to him and tugged him on the, on the slacks, pants leg, and said, Daddy Spank? Daddy Spank? He said, I learned from that that my son was so desperate for my attention... He would take it, even if it was in the form of discipline. You see, Dad is destiny. We have the opportunity to speak into the lives of our children. And they will learn something from us. And, and if you went with us through men's fraternity years ago when we went through it the first time, I've, I've, I went through it uh, in a preliminary study before we took everybody through it here. And it really brought me to, uh, to some grief in my own heart. I had to learn something about myself, that, that the dad I had who, had who had not been a good example for me, that I somehow decided that, that I would be a successful dad if I just wasn't the bad example. But that's, that's not all it takes, folks. And I had to do some repenting to my grown sons. They're here among us. And repent to them because I did not... Uh, positively like I should prepare them for life. They never had to grow up with a dad who would come home drunk or curse out their mom and on and on we could go. But that, just the absence of some things does not make us effective fathers, does not make us men who are seizing the destiny that comes to us in that mantle of fatherhood. Look at our text here. First of all, the text tells us that there's a dad's prize. Grandchildren are the crown of the aged. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here today. That's not the focus. But, but wow, what that tells us is that a man comes to manhood. He is, he is at his best when he takes on a wife. And in taking on a wife, that the Lord would bless that family with children, whether, whether biologically, through natural procreation, or, or through adoption, to bring children into the home. And then pour your life speak into their lives so that they grow up to be, to be men and women prayerfully who follow the Lord Jesus Christ and they themselves then join in marriage and they themselves have children in their home because it says grandchildren are the crown of the aged. You see, we tend to think, I, I know some parents who think, my children reach 18, see ya. It's been great having you around. We're not finished. We're not finished. We speak into the lives of our children. We continue to pray for them. We pray that they will mar marry well. And when they marry, we pray that they will grow uh, in strong Christian homes and that God will give children to that union and that they will raise their children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord like we have raised them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord and that they will grow up and we will see that our crown will be Grandchildren. By God's grace, I have ten so far. And he may well give us others. And I love it. I love it. One of the most precious things you, you hear, I hear, is Grandpa. Now, I'd like to tell you that I'm very angelic and cherubic and I always respond with a big smile. No, I, I battle remaining sin in, in my own life just like we all do. But what a precious word that is. Because that's the crown. The scripture says it's the crown of, the, of those of us growing old to have grandchildren. In Africa, when I visited our friends in Zambia, I was able to preach there several years ago. In fact, it was, it was, I'll tell you how long ago it was. Pelly, our oldest grandchild, had not been born, but, but she, was, she was on the way. We knew it was a little girl. We knew she was going to be born. And, uh, and they told me then, they said, now, when the next time we, we see you, you will be, you know, right, right now, you are, uh, I think it's uh, she, uh, she Bill. That was what they called me. Was, but you will be Shikulu Pelly when we see you again. They actually name, they, their names, their identification changes 
according to their relationship and family. We have families here who have great-grandchildren. There is no designation for that in Africa. They don't, they don't think in terms of living that long. But Shikulu Peli, which would mean that I am a man who has a grandchild, at least one. Dad's prize. Your prize, guys, is to see grandchildren grow up who love the Lord. So this is no short-term designation. Dad. Second, there is this dad's power, a dad's power. This is a fascinating verse. The glory of children is their fathers. Now this is not the word in the Hebrew that we think of when, when the glory, the Shekinah, would descend upon the tabernacle. The kavod is the, is the Hebrew word. This is a different Hebrew word which speaks of its, its honor, its pride. It's even it can be used as an ornament. The children are most blessed when they, when they can be proud of dad. Kind of shows itself funny in our, in our culture. You know, you see these stickers, my dad can beat up your dad. And I, and I kind of, that's, that's kind of a weird twist on it. But the glory of children is a father. That can be a stepfather. The glory of children, whether they're biological children or adopted children. They find their identity. I think it was Xandra who posted on Facebook that a dad is a son's first hero and a daughter's first love. Did I get that right? It's a great, great identifier. A dad is a son's first hero. Forget, forget all these, the superheroes and the we're the first hero. If we give that up or offer that to someone else or back away and let our, our, our children focus on others, that's shame on us. God builds into a child that innate love for a parent, love for dad. The daughter, the daughter's first love. It's when we as dads love our daughters as we should, and all things being equal, they will love us until we give them away to the man God has raised up to be uh, their protector, their provider, their head. This is, this is serious business. And I'm, I'm not even talking about this. That maybe some sitting here going, oh, pastor, we, if that's the case... I've already blown it. You know the good news about these truths is that, that they're spoken to people who are sinners. And you see, the beauty about Father's Day is that we have an ultimate Father, our Heavenly Father, God, who has shown His love to us not because we, not because we pulled it off perfectly growing up and, and honoring Him, but because He loves us. He sent His only Son. You talk about a father-son relationship, study the relationship of God and Jesus sometime. It will just explode. And what I want to say to you today is, have, if you've messed up, if you've failed, and you certainly have, if you've breathed, repent. Children love it when parents repent to them, acknowledge that we're wrong, and ask them to forgive us. It's a wonderful model for, for us to set. And then seize the opportunity. How is it we can be the glory of our children? Well, it, it, it shouldn't be by us growing up, growing up thinking that we're the end-all, be-all. What they need to see in us that we teach them how to love God. You know, Jesus was asked, what's the greatest commandment? Our children need to learn from us to love God. They need to learn about the heaviness, the weightiness of God. Do our children see us in awe of God? Do they see us yawn at God? Do they see us take God and, and the things of God for granted, worship for granted? I pity the child who grows up without a parent who, who's, 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 not, who's not taking the child into the arena of corporate worship. More and more of that's happening. You're not that person because you're here. But I want to tell you, it's happening around us. You've got to fight the fight of faith. And guys, we must... Show our children that we are in awe of God. That we love God. 
We delight in Him being our Father because of Jesus Christ. They've got to see that in us, to love God. And they've got to see us loving others. They've got to learn relationships from us. I've said to, to couples through the years, to a, the, the best thing a man, a father, can do for his children is to let them see without a doubt, beyond question, that he loves their mother. He loves the mom in the house. And the, and the best thing a, a woman can do for her children is to let them see that she loves and respects her husband and in that basic relationship. But they need to see us in other relationships. Our children need to learn what it means to love one another, to love others, to love the stranger. They've got to see us engaging the world around us in love. Not with fear. Not with disdain. They need to learn from us how to love sinners. Two great, heavy things we can teach our children growing up. When, when we're the, the glory of children, the glory of children is their fathers. Dads, we need to step forward. You know, in men's fraternity, we, we learn that we need to reject passivity. A passive dad is, a, is an awful model for a child. Reject passivity. Accept responsibility. Lead courageously. And then show that we are looking for a greater reward. The reward God will give. The well done, good and faithful servant we want to hear at the end of the day, at the end of the journey. We must live before our children with eternity in view. They've got to catch from us before they ever believe it themselves. That the life we have, here, have now here, the abundant life, is because of the life we anticipate for eternity. And they must know that the aching of our heart, the most, that the greatest desire we have in our heart is for them to be in eternity with us. There's a lot of ways that works itself out. We need to, we need to teach our children. We need to say to our children, I love you. I love you. They should never wonder about that. I didn't hug my children enough growing up. I didn't, to my shame. They need to feel it. Boys need their dads to hug them. I love you. They need to hear from us, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'm grateful God gave you to me, to us. They need to hear that verbally. Don't, think, don't, think, don't assume that they understand that because you work and you put a roof over their head and put food on the table. Don't think that they make the connection. Speak it. And then speak into their lives. Speak, speak encouragement into their lives. That I Point out to them that you see how God's developed. You're good at this. I see that you're good at that. You're very capable. You have, a, you have a great gift. You have a great skill to speak those things. Speak into their lives because I promise you there's an enemy of our souls who is speaking into their lives and he's lying to them. Now, I was going over this message this week, preparing it, and had it all together, and then started going through some email last night. And I came across in the email box a video from Paul David Tripp, whom I love. Paul Tripp is a wonderful guy. He's written some great stuff about family and marriage. And I clicked on it to see what he had to say. And it was amazing. It was, it was basically what I've been studying this week. I want you to watch this briefly. I want you to hear from an expert on families and relationships. Hear what he has to say before we wrap this up today. One of the One things that, that I've commented on is my, my dad, dad did, a did a great job, great job of, of imparting, imparting just some, some life, life skills, skills, everyday skills, skills but didn't really, didn't really prepare, prepare me for the, for the weightier, weightier things of, of, life. of life. I would, I would, I would characterize, characterize that as relationship, relationship with God and relationship, relationship with people in two, in two categories. categories. Uh, uh, I, think I think one of the, one best, of the best ways, ways to, prepare to prepare 
your, your son, son for life, for life is, is helping, helping as, as early, early as possible to be, to be enthralled with the, with the stunning glory and grace of God. Of God. Talk, Talk about God all, all the time. The time. Blow, Blow your, your son's mind with the, with the glory of God. God. Now, you now you have opportunities. opportunities. If you're, if you're building, building something, something stop, stop and talk, and talk about, about the grain of wood. wood. And talk about, and talk about how, how beautiful wood, wood is, is and, and that beauty came out of the mind of God. God. You're, nailing you're nailing a nail. A nail. Talk, talk about just the force, force of a hammer and all the physics, physics that goes on there came, came out of the mind of God. Of God. If, you're if you're fishing, fishing remind, remind your child, your son, your son of, how of how different a trout looks from a bass. And and. And tell, and tell your son, your son that, 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 that came, came out of the mind of God. Of God. As, you're As you're watching the sunset, the sunset talk, talk about the God, the God who, rules who rules the day, the day and, the and the night. Because, because she, this, this is, is the Father's, the Father's world. world. This is, this God's, is God's world. world. This, world, this is world is meant to point to, point to Him. To him. And your, son, and your may son may not see him. See him. It's, a it's a good possibility he won't. He won't. And, and, and the, the, more, the, more the more he's enthralled with God, God the, more the more that he's ready to give, give himself, himself to God. To God. And, what and what is more important than that? And then, and then there's, there's a second great command. It's, it's love, love of others. others. Human, Human relationships, relationships are hard. Are hard. Love, love is hard. Is hard. And, and listen, listen love, is, love hard. is hard, not, not because, because I'm surrounded by creepy people. people. Love, is, love hard is hard because of what's inside of my heart. I'm, I'm judgmental, I'm critical, I'm, critical. I'm, unforgiving. I'm unforgiving, I'm proud, I'm, proud. I'm, competitive. I'm competitive, I'm greedy, I'm, I'm envious. All those, All those things, things are antisocial instincts. instincts. I wish I, I would have had, had, had a dad who would have looked, looked me in the face and said, and said son, you're going, be you're going to be leaving this home. home. You're, going you're going to be building relationships. relationships. And I just, and I just want, want you to hear me say this. Me say this. The, greatest the greatest danger to those relationships is you. And there's, and there's some things inside, inside of you that God, that God desires, desires to help, to help you, you with. That God, that God sent His Son to rescue, to rescue you from. And the more, and the more you face, face those, those, the more, the more you'll be a person of love. And the, and the more you're a person of love, the more you'll you live a life of blessing. Never had, Never had those conversations with my father. My father. Oh, I oh, I learned a lot of helpful skills. skills. But, in but in many ways, ways didn't know didn't myself. myself. Wasn't, wasn't filled with the, with the awe of God. In the, in the way, way that would have, would have so, so much better prepared, prepared me for life. Dad is destiny. Let's make the most of that. There's a contemporary writer who wrote this. Sometimes at night I'd lie awake longing inside for my father's embrace. Sometimes at night I'd wander downstairs and pray that he had returned. But no one was there. Oh, how I cried, a child all alone, waiting for him to come home. My father's chair sat in an empty room. My father's chair covered with sheets of gloom. My father's chair through all the years and all the tears I cried in vain, for no one was there in my father's chair. Sometimes at night I sit all alone drifting asleep in a chair of my own when sweet, sleepy eyes peer down from the hall, frightened by dreams they cannot recall, holding them close, calming their fears, Praying, they always will say, my father's chair sits in a loving room. My father's chair, no matter what I do, my father's chair through all the years and all the tears I need not fear. Love's always there in my father's chair. Sometimes at night I dream of a throne, of my loving God calling me home. And as I appear, he rises and smiles reaches with love to welcome his child, never to cry, never to fear, in his arms, safe and secure. My father's chair sits in a royal room. My father's chair holds glory beyond the tomb. 
My father's chair, my God is there, and I am his eternal heir. Someday I'll share my father's chair. That's where we're headed. Dad, men, and moms, let's recognize that the children God has given you, however he has given them to you, through, through biological procreation, through adoption, through marriage, into a blended family, he's given you these children. When he gives them to you, you are their glory. You are their glory. Don't squander that. Don't lose that. Don't shatter that. Seize it. Seize it. To speak into them the weightier things of life. That one day, when they themselves are parents, which means you'll be grandparents, that will be your crown. When they themselves are parents, they can speak of the blessedness of how their destiny was shaped in God's providence by a dad who took that responsibility seriously and used it redemptively. Let's pray. Dear Holy Father, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, again we bow. We are thankful that you are our example of Father. Whatever, whatever we have in our past, we can look beyond and above all that and see that you are our example of what a father is.